Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day or night wherever you are watching this. I have a few words today in uh, this video. Uh, we are going to be reacting to a clip from the red carpet premiere, I guess, of Kenobi or whatever it was where you and, and Hayden were uh, answering some questions from journalists or uh, whatever they were doing on that red carpet uh, for Kenobi just a couple days ago. They mentioned something about Revenge of the Sith and then there was an article that Ewan talked in with a journalist and he goes over his relationship with Star Wars now uh, with the prequels, how he felt when they came out versus now and how he actually went to watch the prequels for the first time since they came out so i mean that's that's 17 years uh in preparation for this movie so we're gonna go through all that today let's go through it now and uh leave a like on this vid if you're about to enjoy it so ewan goes on to say it was an odd experience to make those movies the prequels when you step into this world it's a big deal it's scary and then those films were critically not liked very much or they weren't written very nicely about the about by the critics but what we didn't hear at the time was people your age your generation we meet those people now who really love our films, you know, but it's taken us 15 years to hear that. And it's so nice. It's really nice. It's changed my outlook. My relationship with Star Wars is different because of that. Of course, that's beautiful to hear. I remember at the time when the prequels came out, I was nine years old when episode one came out, 12 when episode two came out, and 15 when episode three came out. And I remember Throughout the whole time, there was a lot of uh, pitter-patter about, you know, how the prequels were eh, clunky dialogue or, you know, lame or slow or uh, ruined Star Wars. Kind of like the same stuff, you know, we, we hear now. Well, maybe a little different, but um, a lot of it was harping on Hayden's acting. And if you haven't seen my video, why Hayden Christensen acted perfectly as Anakin Skywalker, I will prove it to you. Go watch that video. It's got over 2 million views now, and I'm a huge Anakin stan. You guys know that. Where is he? Is. So for me, the character is very important and always has been. And if you see the channel, you know, most of my videos are about Anakin because that's my interest. So I'm I'm happy that finally <laughs> uh, we're going to be getting some more Anakin love. You know, well, some Anakin love for the first time in about uh, 17 years, really. So Ewan goes on to say, uh, we put our heart and soul into the prequels and they were difficult to make because the second one, the third one, there was so much green screen and blue screen because George was pushing into this new realm that he had designed. He was responsible for ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, and he wanted to max out that technology. But that meant for us that we were very much on blue screens and green, screen, green screens, and it was hard work, right? So it's not like now where they have stagecraft for Mandalorian and they're like on a set. They had to imagine while they were acting, which is much more difficult. So I bet for Kenobi, they probably had a really great time. And it was hard work. And to do that and be passionate about it, and then for the films not to be very well received was really tough. So it's really lovely to have this new relationship with them now and then watching them again. I hadn't seen them since they came out in preparation for this show it was really cool. So it's like 17 years. I like them. Episode three is really good. It's a really good movie. So what I'm hoping from this is that a lot of people who are maybe on the fence about episode three or, you know, about the prequels will maybe go back and watch them. And, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe now it'll become a little more mainstream and uh, people will jump on the bandwagon. And, you know, uh, episode three is actually great. So let's go ahead and watch the clip right here on this uh press junket or red carpet premiere, whatever it may be. They seem to be on a rooftop. We got Ewan, Moses Ingram, and Hayden Christensen. And Hayden's looking great, man. He's looking young as ever. So in, a, in his full Vader pose the whole time, mind you. So let's go hear what they have to say. And this is uh, from Amazing Hayden Christensen on Instagram and credit for the video to Keldor Jedi on Twitter. So I imagine the full clip of this is out there somewhere but uh anyways we're gonna react to this right here i like them you know i like them our episode three is really good it's a really good movie and it's a, it's, it's a phenomenal film yeah. <laughs> yeah. non-stop action yeah, yeah. that's the high ground i, I, I had the high ground yeah. <laughs> not anymore not man. anymore maybe <laughs> on the picture well, on the picture, yeah, on the picture. Well, no, i'm still looking at it <laughs> But I would like a dollar for every time someone's told me I had the high ground. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's not cool. I like that. Yeah, that's funny. Hey, Vader's like kind of on the high ground there. And if you look at the actual poster, uh, Vader is in the he, he's he's at Kenobi's heart, which is quite poetic, quite beautiful, quite emotional. So one of the main points that I want to add in this video, and which was really one of the things that sparked um, me making this vid is of course that piece that we just talked about that, that you and Hayden, um, you know, watching the prequels for the first time, or at least you and did since 
uh, they came out, which was you know, over 17 years ago, just for Revenge of the Sith alone, before I get to my point, it also does help with their wanting to come back, their willingness to come back to Star Wars as well, right? So now that they're seeing all of this love from us, you know, back then, Twitter, I don't think existed. And if it did, I mean, I don't remember. I wasn't, I, de well, I definitely wasn't on it. I think Facebook was just coming out. YouTube was just coming out at that time. So these were, the world was shaping into, the social media game was shaping into what it is now today. And if Twitter or something like that was out back then, where, you know, us as 15 year olds could be on there all day. I feel like we may have been able to get more of our voices across with the positivity, but also it may have opened up a lot more negativity too. So you never really know with, with those kinds of devices and social media platforms. Anyways, now getting on to my actual point, regardless of how Kenobi ends, and you know, I'm talking to myself too, I think it's really important that we remain composed as much as we can and kind of focus on the writing being not what we expected or being amazing uh, as opposed to you know attacking the actors themselves like what happened with kelly marie tran right same thing i mean her character in my opinion was written atrociously but that's not you know the actor's fault she did a great job she did her thing and she did what she was paid to do uh, she shouldn't have gotten any of the actual backlash from the fans themselves because it's not her fault she was just reading lines right she was doing her thing same with hayden and if you haven't seen that video go check that video out it may make you think a little bit differently or at least maybe see the point of view of some people who actually really like the prequels and think Anakin did a fine Hayden did a fine job regardless how it ends I really hope that we can remain composed and show Anakin show Hayden Christensen the love that he deserves as the chosen one in Star Wars as you know the guy who really shaped a lot of our childhoods with Star Wars, right? This is the chosen one. This is Anakin Skywalker. This is Darth Vader. Uh, for me, he was a very big deal. I remember when episode one came out, I was nine years old. It was Jake Lloyd. And uh, speaking of Jake Lloyd, I actually hung out for two and a half hours yesterday with Devin Michael, who was the runner up in the behind the scenes to Jake Lloyd, the other blonde boy, who I thought did a fantastic job. Um, it was cool hearing his story and it was cool talking with him. So uh, we exchanged numbers and y you guys will probably see more of him uh, on the channel someday, some point in time. But what I will say is when episode one came out, I was nine years old and I was very connected to the Anakin character, as I'm sure many were. And I think, you know, that's how George wrote him to be very um, relatable to a lot of people and especially kids, you know, my age, which now us kids are adults and we are the ones that kind of setting the trend for what we like and what we um, have grown up with which is the prequel trilogy episode two i was 12 years old and i saw anakin skywalker as this teenager with a lot of this angst and a lot of this uh you know he was always looking to the future he didn't know where he belonged he always wanted more but he didn't really know how to get it and he was always just expecting more of himself and wanting to be the best that he could. And that, that really spoke to me as a person uh, because I struggle with a lot of that. And I always did with, you know, not really knowing what your path is. And I think we all do. And always wanting that, that, that more of yourself, but not knowing necessarily how to get it and maybe blaming others for holding you back or this and that. There's a lot of psychology that can go into Star Wars, just like any movie and any character. And I feel like George did a fantastic job in writing a lot of these characters characters and making them so relatable to life and so when revenge of the sith came out i studied that movie so much not by like writing things down but just by watching it over and over and over again and thinking about it constantly in my mind you know to the point where i was stopping it and slowing it down and watching it in slow-mo and like practicing the moves and the choreography and man i could go on and on but when it comes to these characters i think they're so deeply rooted in a lot of us not all of us you know some some of you watching this maybe just be like well it's just star wars whatever who cares but for a lot of us i know that we're very passionate about this and with that passion can come a lot of responsibility but you know, a lot of anger and a lot of love. So we got to just be careful moving forward as Star Wars fans. I think, you know, if if Darth Vader can change, you know, and become Anakin, become good again, you know, Anakin can defeat the Darth Vader within him and, and you know, return back to the light. I think us as Star Wars fans, we can learn going into 2023 and beyond, especially with all of the new Star Wars stuff that we're about to get, how to convey our emotions and our thoughts a little more respectfully, a little more eloquently, 
to our fellow Star Wars fans who may have very differing opinions, regardless of how they may be acting, you know? So that's something I want to get across in this video. As beautiful as it is that they feel the love, I want them to keep feeling the love. And that is us doing that. That's all on us. That is our power. We are very powerful in this fandom and we are the ones keeping the lights on. You know, in essence, sort of, we are the ones paying all of these actors. We are the ones paying um, for the Lucasfilm to have their lights on. If it wasn't for the fans, they wouldn't be successful, right? Sure, they make a great product, a great story, but it is us who is, you know, buying all of their stuff and watching their stuff. So I feel like we have more power than we give ourselves credit for. Like you guys, for example, like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys watching and subscribing and commenting and all that stuff. I wouldn't have anything that I have. Right. So it, it a lot of it lies in the consumer and the people who are watching a lot of that power. And I think, you know, it can be debated, debatable on on both ends. It's a two way street in that sense where we need to show the love to these boys and, and all the other actors that are going to be in the show and everything else going forwards in Star Wars. That's just something I want to drive home. I want them to feel this love and I want them to return to Star Wars going forwards. And um, I think as Star Wars fans, we can really be a cool fandom. We can be a, a butthole fandom sometimes, but we can be a really amazing fandom. We have really big hearts, I believe. So let's show them that. Uh, OK, well, thanks, guys, for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you're looking forward to the most with Kenobi. Are you excited for it? Are you not excited for it? Are you done? <laughs> or are you hopeful and ready and pumped to go forwards? I am. And of course, uh, I'm excited to watch it all with you for the very first time and go through it uh, emotion by emotion, frame by frame. So have a great day. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Until then, remember, the force will be with you always.